Once again, welcome to our broadcast for today, Friday. This is the end of the week and no doubt we are all delighted that we have come to this part of the week. I pray that as we are together this morning that we will be able to benefit something from our time together. Again, I want to apologize for the lack of sound yesterday. Um, that was human error. I am the little human, and these things seem to happen from time to time. But nonetheless, we are here, and we give God thanks for all that God is doing in our lives, in us and through us. Surely it is God who saves me. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. Most holy and gracious God. In this month of focus on emancipation, we ask to be assisted with the wisdom necessary to see how slavery and bondage has affected our lives as Caribbean peoples. We pray that we may put aside anger, hate, pointing of fingers and blame and look within our own selves and discern the ways in which we can all be free. We give thanks for those who before us have understood this path and have sought to guide many along it. Pray that we may see the value in calling into being a new way of engagement in these lands in order that your will may be accomplished, truly accomplished in us all. We pray this in Christ. Amen. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in John's Gospel as we read chapter 2, verse 2 to 12 this morning for our morning devotion. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone jars, water jars, for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers and his disciples, and they remain there a few days. Here ends the reading. Here we meet Jesus today at the beginning of his ministry, and it is always so interesting in the way that life happens. <coughs> And the part that parents play in our lives. The situation presents itself that the wine has run out. And Jesus' mother gets involved. And Jesus, is, Jesus asks, so what, what concern is that of you or me? We are not part of the bridal party or family. But the mother, knowing her son, says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. No matter how strange it may seem, just do it. No doubt because she knew her son. 
she knew what her son was capable of. And hence she could make the statement to the servants. How well do we know each other? A mother knows her son. A son knows his mother. It is interesting how John presents this particular episode at the beginning of his gospel because towards the end of the gospel, once again, we see Jesus in an encounter with his mother where Jesus is on the cross and Jesus says to his beloved disciple, son, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And the disciple takes his mother and looks after her from that moment on. So John has sort of put his gospel in a sense between these two experiences of a woman knowing her son. She knew him in terms of his power. She knew him in terms of his destiny. She knew him. She knew him, she'd carried him in her womb. And no doubt she continued to carry him through her through his entire life. Such is the knowing of a mother in the life of a child. It is interesting how there's so many examples on the outside for us in this journey. Examples that we are intended to take within us it is as though our external lives or our lives on the outside are but parables of what's going on inside. Just like stories <coughs> which are told as parables are in a sense instructive in our everyday life. So our experiences when taken within teach us as well. Mary knows Jesus. Mary knows what Jesus is capable of. God knows each one of us. God knows what each one of us is capable of. And God sets us up. Mary set up Jesus. She said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Mary laid out the situation. All Jesus now had to do was follow her lead. And God does that to you and to me. He knows what our plan is. He knows what the plan of life for us is. We may not be aware of it. We may not think that it is our time yet. We may not think it even has anything to do with us. But God knows. And God sets it up for us to engage. And so when we find those opportunities in life where everything seems to line up, even though we may be thinking that, well, this really has nothing to do with me. The question we must ask ourselves is, why am I here at this moment? Why was Jesus there at that very wedding? Why was it that he was there in that particular circumstance? Why was it that his mother was there as well? Why was it that they had to run out of wine? A very embarrassing thing um, in a wedding ceremony. And judging from the size of the water jars that Jesus asked them to fill, you can see that this was a fair amount of wine that we're talking about. There were six stone water jars, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. That's somewhere between 120 and 180 gallons. And Jesus says, fill them up to the brim. 
100 plus gallons. So 120, 180. That's a lot of wine. Admittedly, there may have been a lot of guests. So somehow it seems as though there was still room. So this was this running out was was obviously extremely early and and obviously would be embarrassing. But it was all lined up. This was to be the first of miracles that Jesus did, and his mother understood that she had a role to play. Maybe not at the full conscious level. And this is our situations in life. If we are going to speak of ourselves as spiritual beings having a physical experience, if we're going to speak of ourselves as people of faith, having faith in God, then there's another component that is essential to any such conversation, and that is, if all the other two are correct, then the third must also be correct. And that is, I walk with awareness in this world. I walk with awareness in this world. Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of now. And we're hearing a lot of talk recently about the present moment and also as a spin-off from that, the whole idea of mindfulness. And all this really speaks about really is walking with awareness. Thich Nhat Hong, a Buddhist monk, has a nice little saying. He says, if you're cutting carrots, cut carrots. In other words, don't be cutting carrots and be thinking about what you have to do tomorrow. But let your attention be where you're at in the moment. The power of this is that when my attention is where I am in the moment, then I am able to draw the richness of the moment. I can see all that needs to be seen. When my attention is elsewhere, because this is something that I have done yesterday, 10 days ago, three weeks ago, four years ago, and it is habitual, then my attention is not there in the moment. And because my attention is not there in the moment and I'm operating on automatic, I miss the story. I miss everything that is going on. All that I see in that moment, all that I experience in that moment is the mundane, the obvious, the in your face. But when I'm in the moment, when I'm in that moment, I become aware of the fact that this is happening. I become aware of the fact that these other things are all lining up in this very moment. And I'm aware of the fullness of the moment. Each moment in our lives is full. Full but we often don't see that because it is some repetitive thing, something that happened before. It's like driving on the highway. You, you know, you're driving and all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, I didn't realize I passed this place already. Why? Because you're an autopilot. And so you miss all that, you know? So, when we say we are on the spiritual journey, what we are saying is that we are walking with awareness. We are in the moment and we are allowing the moment to fill us to the max. Just like Jesus filled the water jars to the brim. We allow every moment of our lives to fill us to the brim so that we draw out the marrow, as it were, from every experience. And when we do that, we run, there is that opportunity for us to actually gather what was important for us 
in that moment. You know, it is it's really interesting when you think about it. And you ask yourselves, what have I missed in my journey thus far? What are the opportunities that I've missed? You don't ask yourself this from a place of regret because there's no going back, we are here. But it's worth asking the question from the perspective of how do I move forward? How do I move forward with greater awareness? Jesus' mother is aware. She's not only aware that there is no wine, she's also aware that she has a, a son that has come into the world with a particular purpose. And that purpose has given him certain access. And she's also aware that he is present. He's here and he's here with his disciples. There are a lot of things lining up for him. And almost as though the mother gives him a nudge because, mind you, the, this, the steward doesn't know where the wine has come from. So there isn't any great public acknowledgement of the presence of the wine. The servants knew, but they're just servants. The steward is at a loss. No doubt the bridegroom too. He probably would take credit for having the good wine at the end. But what we must recognize is that when Jesus did what he did, we're told his disciples believed in him. So you begin with a mother recognizing a circumstance, an opportunity. She gets her son involved, or at least she invites her son to become involved. She sets him up by letting the servants be ready to do his bidding. He does that bidding he does tell them what he wants them to do, and they do do it. We get some good wine, but that's not the point of the story. We get faith. We get an opportunity for belief to take place. Why? Because everyone was paying attention. It was a moment. It was a moment where faith could be strengthened. It was a moment where faith could be accessed. And the disciples got it. When we walk with awareness in our world, when we journey in the present moment, with each moment being recognized as full and important and having a lot to offer, that no moment on this earth, no moment whatsoever is mundane or empty or is the same as the last moment or the moment 10 weeks ago. No matter how much it looks similar, it is not the same thing. So we must never get into that space of, yeah, been there, done that. No. Because you miss opportunities to see the glory of God. God is forever revealing God's self. We are forever walking in blindness. Blindness not of God's making. Blindness of our own doing. The one who has eyes to see. 
let them see. The ones who have ears to hear, let them hear. I pray that you will walk with the kind of awareness that allows you to see the fullness of the moment and to recognize that this is a time for a time for each moment is a time for and in that space faith happens lives are touch and we're able to see what God is doing so may this time be for you moments when you walk with greater awareness and continue to recognize what God is doing in your life what your soul's purpose is because it's always there it's always there, but we have to walk with awareness in order that we can see. Because if we can't see, the moment goes. And all that we have is a moment, like any other moment. How many of those we have had in this journey? Millions, billions of moments that were just moments. When the Father actually had a purpose for us. Friends, the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. You can take that short phrase and expand it out to everything that I was saying this morning. Be still. Don't be distracted. Be still. And know, not be told, not gather information, but know as an experience that I, the I am, God. It is in our walking with awareness. that we know God. And when we know God, we also know ourselves. May God continue to walk with us as we know God will. But even more so, I pray that you and I will walk with greater awareness that we may draw out from every moment all that is for us. <laughs>